What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one I thought I'd go through my FPL team of the season for 2021-22. It's not necessarily players I've always had in my team because that would discount some players who I think are worthy of a mention. And also there's no kind of set criteria in how I've chosen each player because obviously if we do total points it's obvious I don't need to make a video on it. I can just go and read it off the FPL site. They're not all based on value. It could be their expectations at the start of the season versus what they delivered what they delivered for their price versus what other players did and all that kind of stuff so i know there's going to be a lot of disagreement and that's perfectly fine everybody is allowed an opinion let me know below after you've watched the video who is in your team of the season and who do you really disagree with from my pick so i've got my main team and then i've got some special mentions as well at the end so if you enjoyed the video give it a like hit that subscribe button if you're new and let's jump into it all right, we'll start off with the goalkeeper and the defense. I just want to quickly talk about the formation. So I've chosen a 4-5-1. I did originally pick a team that was 3-5-2, which is more, I guess, like a standard formation you'd have in FPL. A lot of people, at least in years gone by, would start off with a 3-4-3, maybe move to 3-5-2 at some point. But it's not very rare you have like more than three defenders for a consistent period of time. But I shared the image in the Patreon Slack channel of my 3-5-2, got a bit of feedback, had a bit of a rethink. And I do kind of agree that... 451 and maybe even 541 for some of you is a little bit more representative of how this season went. Like just think how many weeks you played four or more defenders and how many weeks they were expensive defenders as well. I don't remember too many weeks where I played like four 0.5 million defenders, at least not multiple of them uh, in any case. So that's what I went with. Goalkeeper maybe slightly controversial maybe it should have been Ramsdale over Jose Saar part of the reason that I put Saar in is because of the amount of points he got compared to his starting price but he actually only beat Ramsdale by 11 and he started off 0.5 million more so arguably you could switch those two around it is fairly close I think I was very conscious of not just picking a team full of Liverpool players as well I could have easily had more Liverpool players in this team and I'll come on to the Trent Alexander-Arnold benching in just a second but if we look at the goalkeepers just quick or Allison again he could have just gone in but I didn't want to just pick you no know, most points because that's just boring um Lloris had a pretty good season but Jose Sarr started at five million kind of kept up with the likes of Edison I think he had a pretty good season I also think his performances definitely helped Wolves keep a bunch of those clean sheets like he was arguably Wolves best player this season in fact I'm not even sure it is much of an argument to be honest I, I don't think there's many other players that um are even in the conversation to get ahead of him uh, you could definitely have have chosen or I could have definitely chosen Ramsdale as well there was obviously that stint where he kept getting clean sheets early on kept getting bonus points every time he did and if you didn't own him it was a bit of a nightmare but I've decided to put Saar in the main team I think Ramsdale a little bit unlucky to miss out talking of unlucky to miss out Trent Alexander-Arnold it's the second time now he's hit 200 points he did it not last season but the season before bearing in mind that season he first did it no defender had ever hit 200 points at that point. And now he's done it for the second time. Robertson has got close again. Jao Cancelo has done it as well for Man City. Like, it's just incredible how well these defenders are doing now because of how good they are in attack. And that is why in the last video I was saying, FPL have to put their prices up. I'm not saying they have to make them like 10 or 11 million or anything crazy like that. Although you could argue they should be close to that because that is what other you know attackers are being priced at like 9 10 million when you're hitting 200 points plus um but anyway that's a conversation for another video which i will do um but yeah i was just benching because it was kind of a little bit boring i wanted to try and find ways without forcing it to put other liverpool players in so the reason robertson is in if we just come over back to the fpl page and go to points per match bearing in mind um trent alexander arnold let me just go to defenders. Trent Alexander-Arnold finished the season on 8.4 million. So he was by far the most expensive defender. Robertson was 1.1 million less. And his points per match were only 0.1 less. So he was 6.4. Trent was 6.5. Doesn't mean that Trent is not a better option than Robertson next year. And obviously price will come down to that. But Robertson had a fantastic season. And I think he would have easily broken the 200 point barrier if he didn't miss. Like He, he didn't miss like a ton of games. But he did miss more games. Um than Trent I believe yeah he only played 2,500 minutes so start of the season he was injured for the first couple of games Simicast played then Simicast played again in game week five and there was just odd weeks where I think on the left side Liverpool just have a better backup than they do on the right which is probably part of the reason that Trent played more minutes and ultimately ended up getting more 
points. And it's not a bad thing, right? That's what we want for FPL. But I think Robertson deserves to go in there. And I definitely think Matic does as well. More for his consistency, right? I think sometimes we get players who we consider injury prone. The same happened with Ings like a couple of seasons ago, maybe, where we were so programmed to think he's going to get injured, he's going to get injured. We didn't go for them. And again, was it a mistake to go for Robertson, Trent and Salah as your triple Liverpool? Absolutely not. But for those people that were kind of brave enough to drop one of them for Matip, they did really well. They had extra money to spend elsewhere. And 170 points, just 16 behind Robertson. Absolutely incredible. And again, maybe there's like a little bit of kind of recency bias, but 5.5 points for match. That was more than Reese James, only 0.1 less than Cancelo. Matip had an excellent season. And he barely missed any games, especially late on. I think from kind of game week 22 onwards, he only missed the game in 28 and then one game in 36. And that was it. He played. He got three goals, three assists. Good for bonus points as well. Joel Matip, incredible season. And that is why he's in team of the season for me. And, that, and that's why I've not put Trent. Obviously, Trent could have been in there. But I wanted to make things a bit more interesting. Jao Cancelo, a little bit different to Matip in that we didn't consider him injury prone, but we definitely didn't consider him nailed on early on. At least a lot of us didn't. I don't think I did. I think we quickly cottoned on to it. Um, but again, I think with Man City, we're always kind of on uh, erring on the side of caution that this player might not be completely nailed on. So for the fact that he played pretty much all season was when fit, played nearly every single game, plenty of attack and returns, played in one of the best defences and cracked the 200 points. I think that's the first non-Liverpool defender to do it. He had to go in. Again, he was super consistent for most of the season. I got a little bit lucky dropping him on my wild card and picking him back up later. They're the kind of risks you take sometimes. But ultimately, he was great. And I put Reese James in. Maybe this is the most controversial pick from the whole defence. Only 141 points. But I think when he was fit, he absolutely delivered. And this isn't, again, this isn't a dig at Trent. Again, Trent could easily be in this team. But if you look at the attack and returns, right? Because a lot of people kind of question why we kept putting Reese James in our teams. And obviously having injury prone players is a little bit frustrating. It's not really what you want to do. But his potential to deliver is just crazy. And he had those big hauls, which were season defining moments for a lot of people, especially especially if you caught them while captaining him. And this is Trent's numbers, right? Two goals, 12 assists in 2,853 minutes. So 14 attack and returns. And if we go to Reese James, he played 1,863 minutes, so about 1,000 minutes less. And he got five goals, nine assists, 14 attack and returns. In 1,000 fewer minutes, he got the same amount of attack and returns. And his goal threat is higher, so they're worth more points as well. And yes, Chelsea defence is not quite as good as Liverpool defence, but there's still... Um, clean sheets to sometimes be had there as well it's just the injuries just killed him as an fpl option like he played a lot um kind of in the middle from like kind of game week nine onwards it's just those big patches of zero points which is why he didn't do it and again being nailed on and being fit is definitely a consideration when we make fpl picks and depending on the price trent will almost certainly be the first name on the team sheet for a lot of us uh, next year but i just think for the value of robertson and matip the man city pl uh, defender finally being nailed on and cracking the 200 points and reese james's ridiculous amount of attack and returns in far fewer minutes than the rest just puts them in so that's my defense let me know below what you think so we have to start with mo salah what ridiculous consistency and you could call me a hypocrite because part of the reason i've put salah in is just because of the last five seasons all above 200 points all absolutely incredible all fully consistent from him constantly scoring goals getting assists and stuff like that and really trent has been the same for the last three seasons as well so again a little bit unlucky not to be in the main team but i've already given you my reasons why that was the interesting thing for salah is that if we forget about the whole little bit he was at chelsea right only the liverpool stuff counts for fpl the first season Right, this is his fifth season. The first season, 303 points. He's then backed that up with four 200-plus points in a row. And this season is second highest. So some players, obviously, they do super well for a little bit and then start to tail off a little bit. Salah is just like even getting better in some ways. I know he's not hit 303 points. But to be five seasons in... 
uh, and then get how many attack and returns was it? Let me just double check. Forty, uh, sorry, thirty-seven attack and returns. It's just absolutely ridiculous. He is now the undisputed king of FPL. Ever since FPL was launched, there has never been a better player than Salah. I know on rehab a few really good scores. Ronaldo as well. Lampard was fairly consistent. I think he did two hundred plus points six seasons in a row. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been even longer. But for Salah to put up like a two six five and a three oh three in that time, he is the undisputed. Uh, player he's pretty much nailed on hardly ever injured and i say pretty much nailed on because next season maybe he gets a little bit more of a rest i don't see it that much to be honest but they have now got a few extra attackers and they haven't that they haven't had in previous seasons but yeah pretty much nailed on hardly ever injured on penalties i know that game week 30 to 38 if you went without him you probably did really well but at one point this season people were calling him the best player in the world not in the league in the world so he had to be in there son obviously has to be in there as well just because of the I guess value in comparison to Salah because obviously he did start the season cheaper and to push him right to the end 258 points that's now his second season in a row with 200 points or more he got 228 last year he will be due a price hike I think he's I'm gonna get all the prices wrong I think he started at 11 this year let me just double check he started at 10 well that is so cheap I thought he started at 11. I'm just an idiot, right? I'm just an idiot with a webcam and a YouTube channel. 10 million. He's going to be, I would say, at least 11.5, possibly even 12 next year. I think when you get 200 points or more twice in a row, when you get 33 attack and returns, you need a, you can't be 10 million, right? So next year is going to be a real conversation to be had about when we put him in our teams because all these player prices are going to go up. We're not going to be able to have teams like the one on screen, not from game week one anyway. So fantastic season from Som. I think there's probably an argument to be made outside of FPL that he almost deserves the golden boot a little bit more for scoring the same amount of goals without penalties and I get the argument that you've still got to have the bottle to step up and convert the penalties and they're not that easy etc but I think to get the same amount of goals as Salah with less uh, with no penalty, sorry, it is absolutely incredible. So that was a ridiculous season. Arguably the best season out of the whole of FPL was Sons. Just be, it's almost a bit harsh to Salah because the expectations are just so high. But again, to do it without penalties and to get 258 and only be seven points behind, I do feel like that was probably the best season this year um, for me. Anyway, let me know down below if you disagree. Kulisevsky has to be in there for me as well. I know it's team of the season, so you could argue because he only joined in January, he doesn't deserve a spot over other players. But I think 99 points, I think he played 18 games. So if you double that, he's close to 200 for like 6 million he came in at. That's crazy cheap. And I'm just, again, I'm just going to double check the price. I'm pretty sure he was 6 million. Um, yeah, he started at 6. That is just ridiculous value. In the 18 games as well, he got five goals, nine assists. So 14 attack and returns in 18. That's nearly one every game. And and I think the thing that he gave us, for those of us that didn't want to or couldn't go to Son and Kane, so having both because we own Salah and we didn't want to go triple premium, he gave us access to a Spurs team that was scoring plenty of goals. And for that reason, I put him in. I think nearly cracking 100 points when you've only played less than half a season, only just about, but just about less than half a season's games and being nailed on and being so cheap great value that big haul on the last day of the season as well for me i put him in and like i said this there's no set criteria for the players that i've chosen they these are the reasons why i've chosen them i just think he like when i thought about players that kind of stood out for me there wasn't too many midfielders that were kind of above him really apart from obviously the four that i've got on the other four that i've got on screen now jared bowen incredible again another player to crack 200 points well i, I keep again i think he was 6.5 to start with um and realistically, at the start of the season, nobody was chatting about him. Yeah, he was 6.5 million. Nobody chatted about him because we were all on Antonio and Ben Rama. And to be fair, Ben Rama did really well. Um, but Jared Bowen was putting up pretty good stats. And I think when he started like getting attack and returns nearly every game, he really came on to everyone's radar. This really was kind of a form and returns pick. So we'd seen him do really well. Therefore, everyone went for him. I was quite late on. He got his first assist against Man United. Uh, but then he just did the business the whole season. And again, 12 goals, 17 assists, 29 attack and returns for Jared Bowen at 6.5 million. I dread to think what his price wouldn't be next year. It'll be 8.5 
five or nine million, I would assume. But again, great for FPL because he's pretty much nailed on. You would hope that West Ham might spend a little bit more money, improve that team, possibly have a backup for Antonio. So there. They can just rotate a little bit more. I don't think Jared Bowen particularly um, needs a lot of rest. But if the players around him can get that extra bit of rest, who knows what West Ham could do next year. It's going to be hard, obviously, to keep cracking the top six um, and to get as close as they did this year. But I, I think I think Jared Bowen for 8.5 or even 9 million could be extremely good value. His underlying numbers, expected goals, expected assists are proper decent. To get two... 200 point scores in a row is difficult but i wouldn't put it past him not if he gets the same amount of minutes as he did this year and then i had to put my boy saka in because i had him very early on he wasn't good for me i think i tweeted or maybe said that this was going to be the last game in my team please do something it was against newcastle i believe and he scored and then went off injured straight away which is kind of just how he went how how you know uh, he kind of did for me early on, like how he did in my team early on, um, but ended up keeping him for pretty much the whole season. And then to get penalties at the end as well. I know we didn't take the one uh, last day because Martinelli won it and took it, but to have those couple of penalties out of the blue as well, just an incredibly consistent um, season. And I think next year we're obviously going to have the five subs rule. And look, players like Saka and Salah might get up, brought off a little bit more, right? If the game is won, you can give them an extra 10, 15 minutes rest because you've got five substitutes and stuff like that. That might happen. But I think maybe to some extent we're going to be looking even more for these nailed on players and you just know and this is what you want in your FPL team where you can there's always going to be those players you try and get in because they're explosive and because they're cheap and they're good value and no one else owns them like Man City players for example but with Saka every time the Arsenal team sheet comes out you know he's going to be on there um, and that is very valuable for FPL and like he was probably been one of my favorite players this season I know towards the end everyone owned him anyway it's not like he was a big differential in my team but I do feel like I had him quite early on like a lot of these other players I just didn't if anything I was behind on a lot of these players um, but still managed to finish all right so I guess it wasn't too bad in the end but yeah Saka finishes it off that's the four that's the five let's take a look at the one so I had to put Harry Kane in 192 points the fact that he got so close to 200 after such an awful start to the season like if we just take a quick look at just how he did um, obviously there was all the Man City talk and, and we all know that happened right Man City tried to get him it didn't happen he wanted to leave right? I don't think any of that is kind of a secret anymore but he only scored one goal against Newcastle so apart from that one goal in game week 8 against Newcastle the guy didn't score until game week 18 that is absolutely mental for someone like Harry Kane so nothing against City I didn't play against City on the opening day I only played 18 minutes against Wolves but from game week 3 to game week 15 he only got one goal, one assist. And yet he still finished on 192 points. He still finished on 17 goals, 11 assists. That partnership with Son was absolutely incredible. And so, again, you could make an argument that he doesn't deserve to be in there because he had such a poor start to the season. But I think this just shows how bad forwards were last year that I just didn't really want to put any of them in. Because of the formation, I had to put two on the bench. The reason that I chose Vardy is because he still struck up 133 points despite the injury concerns he had he was actually sorry if i just go back to the fpl page 5.3 points per game was actually the top for forward so he matched ronaldo on a points per game basis for less money we could have argued for ronaldo in there but i just didn't fan i just didn't really like him over kane i just didn't really like him over vardy either and i've put pookie in just for consistency 142 points for a very cheap price nailed penalties all that good stuff i don't think he really necessarily had a run a bit like dennis did for example and i think for that reason a lot of the times he just wasn't in our teams but ultimately the forwards were just rubbish i could have easily just played a 5-5-0 um, but i just didn't think that was fair because that's not how it works in fpl so that's my team of the season Saar, Cancelo, Robertson, Matip, James in midfield we've got Kulisevsky, Bowen, Son, Saka and Salah and Kane up front with a bench of Ramsdale, Trent, Vardy and Puki. let me know below who I've got wrong and let's talk about some special mentions so special mentions, I've just picked 11. I haven't done a bench here. Um, and back to a traditional 3-4-3. Who knows, that might be the formation of choice once again next year. We'll have to wait and see. So first up in goal, I've gone for Ben Foster. A few reasons. I think one, it's not that often we have a playing goalkeeper for most of the season that's only 4 million. So he was very useful to have on our benches a lot of the time. Sometimes we needed to play him in game. Sometimes he delivered, sometimes he didn't. But ultimately, happy to have him in there. And I think he also did really well for a few people 
people on the bench boost. I know um, uh, FPL Focal, Oscar, had him on a bench boost early on, did well. Those are people that had Game Week 36 bench boost as well. He did really well, 14 points. And ultimately, he's the first Premier League footballer or current Premier League footballer that I've had on the channel. And that was a pretty cool experience. One of my favorite uh, moments of the season. So big thanks to him. He had to go in on special mentions. Doherty and Chilwell are kind of what could have been if they had just stayed fit and hadn't got those kind of big injuries which were very unfortunate just to kind of um, bring it up on the FPL page Chilwell on a points per match basis was 7.9 now I know he probably wouldn't have carried that on for the rest of the season but if him and Chil uh, sorry if him and Reese James could have stayed fit who would have known what Chelsea could have done from a points perspective I don't think they would have challenged for the the title or anything like that I think Man City and Liverpool are just too far ahead who knows next season but from a points perspective for FPL they would have done extremely well uh, and obviously Chilwell had only come back from injury and then got injured again but in this spell from kind of game week 7 to 12 it was just absolutely ridiculous three goals in a row and then he got an assist in the game against Leicester and the only the only team he blanked against was Burnley unfortunately then he missed the whole season and just came on in the last game which was nice to see good to see him back but it was kind of like just a special mention for how good he was in that very very brief period and the same for Doherty now some of us um, obviously jumped on late to Doherty but when he finally got his place in the team 18 points against Leeds followed up by a 14 against Everton then we all get him in for the double game week he blanks against Man United gets six against Brighton nothing against West Ham in 30 remember that was a blank game week as well and then 14 points against Newcastle goal and assist they did concede but he still absolutely smashed it but then unfortunately went and got injured and I think honestly he would have I don't think he would have changed the last kind of eight to nine game weeks in a, in any major way but he would, would have given us more money to spend elsewhere because i remember when i was looking at it, even though they didn't have a lot of double game weeks necessarily there were so many good fixtures that i was planning on playing him quite a lot and he was so cheap as well it would have just given money to spend elsewhere so that was pretty decent i think matt cash to get 147 points in that villa team pretty consistent goal on the last day against man city as well there weren't really too many other defenders that stood out. I, I could have just picked more from kind of uh, Liverpool. Van Dijk did very well again. Laporte obviously did really well at Man City. They could have been in there, but I decided to go for cash. Madison, fantastic season, 181 points, did really well for me in free hit 37 when he got me, uh, I think it was 25 points. And for anyone that had him for the last stint of the season, he did incredibly well. But ultimately, he was fairly consistent when he played for most of the season. His expected goal numbers also went up slightly as well. I think he was around like a 0.2 expected goals per 90 uh last season something like that anyway off the top of my head and this season he's more up at like 0.3 so he's definitely someone to consider if he doesn't get a big price hike next year Ben Rama and Antonio had to be in for how ridiculously good they were very early on in the season they were a bit of a bandwagon they were both in my team incredible amount a bit like Chilwell incredible amount of points in a very short period of time and I actually with one of them in Ben Rama got a little bit lucky in that I sold him fairly early on for Saar at Watford who then got me like 24 points in two weeks with Antonio I definitely held on to him for too long but that happens sometimes right you're hoping that the underlying numbers start to convert but like Madison with his expected goals per 90 going up Antonio's actually came down this year that might have been just due to the amount of minutes he's played maybe he needs a little bit of a rest maybe if West Ham's fixtures are good next year and he's still first choice and he still looks nailed he could be back in our game with one teams but ultimately it was kind of a really good start and then a really 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 bad end for maybe like the last two thirds of the season at least from an FPL perspective obviously West Ham themselves did really well in Europe and stuff like that Richarlison had to go in for me as a special mention because I only owned him for one week this season and it was in game week 37 and obviously he went and got the 19 points he was my captain as well he really helped me get that top 10k right at the last minute because from game week 36 i'd done pretty poor the free hit was good last couple of mentions bernardo silver and dennis just for the runs they went on they weren't really good for me because i never owned either of these two players but if you got them at the right time for those big runs in the middle of the season where they seem to score or assist every single week i feel like they're a bit divisive in the fpl community there was there was me saying there's no way they can continue it then they continued it then people jumped on at the wrong time then they were frustrated they started blanking i just think because of that kind of story they had to be in this video and then kevin de bruyne it's harsh to leave him out 196 points missed a good few games as well easily would have cracked 200 points probably kept up with son and salah had he played the whole season i mean he didn't it's not that he missed the whole 
season or anything like that but i think there were quite a few games like if we just come here so you know miss the first kind of five game weeks there's another game weeks here game week nine he only plays 13 minutes 12 to 14 he's injured he only plays off the bench in the next couple of games so to get 15 goals eight assists and obviously be so good with bonus which is how he tops up his score he definitely could have rivaled son and salad he played the whole season so again a bit harsh maybe not to be in the main team but couldn't include everyone let me know what you, below what you think of these special mentions who would have been your team in the season as well if you enjoyed it give it a like hit that subscribe button if you're new and i'll catch you again soon